Defining Debt Settlement and Its Implications Debt settlement, also known as debt arbitration, debt negotiation, or credit settlement, is a debt reduction strategy in which the debtor and the creditor agree on a reduced value that will be considered full payment. During the negotiation term, the debtor makes all payments to the debt settlement company, which withholds payments to creditors. Even if the debtor paid a big sum, payments were made. Once all of the debtor's accounts have gone into default as a result of the non-payment, the debt settlement company can force the debtor to take a reduced lump sum payment as a settlement. Due to the default, the debtor's credit rating suffers dramatically, especially if the debtor was not behind on payments before the negotiating period began. Despite the fact that the accounts have been settled, the default will appear on the debtor's credit report for seven years. Nonetheless, some debtors prefer this option to bankruptcy for debt relief. Many people confuse debt settlement with debt consolidation or debt management. In debt management and debt consolidation, the customer pays a monthly fee to the debt consolidator, who then distributes the remaining funds to the creditors. Creditors will continue to receive payments each month in this manner. In debt settlement, the consumer makes monthly payments from which the debt settlement company deducts expenses for legal labor or negotiation, and the remaining amounts are sent to the creditor. The debt settlement agency may convince the creditor to accept a settlement that is less than the debtor's actual payment, with the debt settlement firm taking the difference. Debtors may choose debt settlement over traditional debt management because they are unfamiliar with the process. Debt settlement has been used by lenders for thousands of years, but it became popular in the late 1980s and early 1990s. Consumers and financial woes are hit by charge-offs as a result of bank deregulation that loosens consumer lending policies, followed by an economic downturn. Banks are writing off more debts. Banks created settlement departments with personnel empowered to negotiate with defaulted cardholders to lower outstanding balances in the aim of recovering money that would otherwise be lost if the cardholder filed for Chapter 7 bankruptcy. Along with the enormous rise in personal debt loads, normal settlements ranged between 25% and 65% of the outstanding total. Another significant, if criminally underreported, change occurred in 2005 when legislation was passed that drastically reduced the opportunities for normal Americans to file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy protection. If a person applying for bankruptcy fails to pass the IRS mandated means test, they will be denied. Instead, they'd be placed in a Chapter 13 debt reconstructing plan. Essentially, Chapter 13 bankruptcies inform borrowers that they must repay some or all of their debts to all unsecured creditors. Chapter 13 repayments can range from 1% to 100% of the amounts owing to unsecured creditors. Repayment terms vary depending on the debtor's ability to pay. Three years for individuals earning less than the median income and five years for those earning more. The consequences for failing to comply with court-ordered budgets that follow IRS criteria are more severe. The practice of negotiating with creditors to lower overall obligations in exchange for a lump sum payment is known as debt settlement. When a creditor agrees to forgive a part of the overall account balance, the settlement is successful. Only debts not secured by real property such as homes or automobiles can usually be resolved. Medical bills and credit card debt are unsecured debts, not student loans, vehicle loans, or mortgages. This makes perfect sense to the debtor. They avoid the stigma and intrusive court-mandated controls of bankruptcy while lowering their debt balances by up to 50%. Whereas the creditor regains trust that the borrower intends to repay what he can of the loans rather than filing bankruptcy, in which case the creditor risks losing all money owed. 
Dealing with a collection agency or junk debt buyer is comparable to dealing with a credit card company or other original creditor. However, because the junk debt buyer has purchased the debt for a fraction of the original value as part of the settlement, many collection agencies or junk debt buyers would agree to take less of the outstanding amount than the original creditor. The consumer has the option of having the collection deleted from their credit report, which is not always possible with the original creditor. Even if the collection account has been successfully removed from the consumer credit report as a condition of settlement, according to Maxine Sweet, a spokeswoman for Credit Reporting Bureau Experian, negative marks from the initial credit card company will remain during discussions. Different regulations govern professional debt settlement companies in the United States, depending on the country. Debt relief firms are obligated to offer information, including the constant terms, prior to a consumer signing up for services. A genuine business will employ a trust account guaranteed by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Once sufficient cash have been accumulated, the negotiating procedure with each creditor can begin. Individual trust accounts, also known as special purpose accounts, are frequently kept by banks and managed by a bank agent for a monthly maintenance fee. Creditors can hold accounts or sell them to collections agencies for an average of 15 cents on the dollar, which can still be negotiated in some cases. A monthly payment that a customer makes payments to the debt settlement business or the bank or bank agent in charge of the trust. The debt settlement company keeps a percentage of each payment as fees, while the remainder goes into the trust account. The consumer is instructed not to pay the creditors anything. The costs charged by debt settlement businesses are normally included in the enrollment contract and can range from 10% to 75% of the total debt to be settled. Debt settlement agencies are prohibited from collecting fees from debtor clients until a creditor settlement has been achieved and at least one payment has been made according to FTC regulations beginning October 27, 2010. Debt settlement agencies typically charge a portion of the debt forgiveness savings as a fee for their services. Working on the accounts require a team of individuals and, of course, time. Some people prepare their own taxes, while others lack the time or expertise to do so. Similarly, if a monthly plan is longer than 36 months, the dropout rate for debt settlement programs is significant, at 50%, and customers who find themselves in these types of financial difficulties have difficulty sticking to a structured payment schedule for a protracted period of time. Plans with a duration of 36 months or fewer have a completion rate of over 85%. Good settlement businesses will set up monthly update conversations and create a plan where you might miss a payment or two. If you make all of your monthly payments on time, you can finish the plan six months sooner. Credit card accounts are normally charged off 180 days after the last payment on the account, and then they go into collection. Debt settlement businesses may not be able to handle calls from credit card companies, and calls from collection agencies may reduce when the settlement company contacts creditors. If a creditor violates the FDCPA, legal action might be brought against them. A competent settlement company will work with their clients to ensure that they are protected. Creditors can sue debtors to recover debts and interest. This can be avoided by working with companies that have a solid reputation and processes that shield consumers from these procedures. That's all there is to it. I hope this video provided you with a better understanding of debt settlement. Don't forget to click thumbs up and subscribe to this video. Thanks for tuning in. Have a wonderful day!